Okay, we're going to look at some trickier examples for series, um, trying to find where they converge and diverge. Um, some of these came up, uh, I got a lot of questions from homework on some of these problems, so I thought I'd make a video out of them. So here's one of them. Um, you've got n minus 3 over n to the n squared. And my instinct would be, right, if you've got stuff to the n or n squared, right, that looks like an nth term test, or I'm sorry, a root test would be a good way to go on this one. Um, and so what, if you take the limit as n goes to infinity of the nth root of your expression, and remember when you take the nth root, you're really raising that to the one over n. So that actually is just gonna knock that down to just being the nth power. And then what's I think kind of tricky about this one is you have to remember this special limit that we talked about in at the beginning when we were doing sequences, that the limit of one plus x over n to the n, that has the form, if, if n goes to infinity, this is gonna get small and that's gonna get big. It has the form of one to the infinity, but it's not one. It's always gonna be e to this power. Okay, we can show that with L'Hopital's rule. So with that in mind, what you'd wanna do is split this up, divide the n into both of them, to give you one minus three over n to the n. So then you can see your x value would be negative three. So this limit would be e to the negative three. And that would be our r value when you do the root test. Remember the requirement if the absolute value of r is less than one, which it is, one over e cubed is less than one, then our series would converge. Okay. Kind of related to that, if, and it might be a hint having done what we just did. Uh, but I think this problem shows up in the root text, the root test section of the book. Uh, and so it can be a little bit tricky because you're thinking of taking the root of this one. But if you tried to do the root test and you took the nth root of that, that would leave you, leave you with n minus three over n, which would just go to one. And remember, if you use the root test and you get one for your limit, it's inconclusive, okay? But having just done the other one, you might then realize, actually, I should just take the limit as it is, as n goes to infinity, because that's gonna give us e to the negative three. Now, if you take the limit as is, you're doing the nth term test, right? So the fact that you get e cubed, what's important about that is it's not equal to zero. So therefore we know our series would diverge. Here's another couple, oh, let me move this up here. Okay, so uh, kind of a lot of mess raised to the n plus six here. So that's a good candidate for the root test. And if we raise this to the one over n and distribute it, that's kind of the key here. You get n plus six over n, which if you split up is one plus six over n. And then if you let n go to infinity, this term's gonna go to zero, this is gonna go to zero. So we have the ln of e to the fifth to the first power is just gonna give us five. And so that would be our r value. This time it's bigger than one. So that series would diverge. Okay, n divided by ln of n to the n. Usually we use the root test, you have the whole thing raised to the n, but sometimes it's still an option. So we're gonna do the root test on this. Uh, we're gonna take the nth root of our formula. Now that's gonna leave us, it's gonna unlock the ln. So we have ln of n on the bottom, but on the top we have n raised to the one over n. And this is another one kind of like the e limit. In the very beginning, section 10.1, when we were doing sequences, this has the form of infinity to the zero, and it can be shown using L'Hopital's rule that that limit's equal to one. And so the book acknowledges it. So if you ever see this, n to the one over n as n goes to infinity, that's just gonna go to one. So we have one over ln of n, which is one over infinity, which is zero. And that would be our R value for the root test. So the series would converge. Okay. Now, there's a couple, 
problems that look similar next. Uh, we're talking about a series here of a sub n where notice a sub n is defined recursively. We haven't seen that in a little while, where the first term's one and then a sub n plus one is one plus the inverse tan of n over n times a sub n. Okay. Now, if you thinking about recursive sequences now, and you see a sub n plus one and you see a sub n, now you start to hopefully think about the ratio test, which would be a good test to use here. If we take the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n plus one over a sub n, if you divide both sides by a sub n, then you're gonna be left with one plus inverse tan over n, which remember inverse tan of infinity, what angle has a tangent that's approaching infinity is pi over two. So we get one plus pi over two, which is a number divided by infinity, that would give us zero. For the ratio test, when I teach it, you saw I like to call it quote unquote R to remind myself it's just like a geometric series. Um, and because that's less than one, our series would converge. Now, that being said, this next one, we have a series associated with a recursive sequence. But what's different here is I can't really just divide by a sub n to get to use the ratio test, to right, to get um, a sub n plus one over a sub n, because my n plus one is in the exponent here. So this one's a little tricky. If you write out some terms of that sequence, you'll start to spot a pattern here. So a one was given as one fifth, a two, the next term would be the term before it raised to the n plus one. So a two, my value of n would be one here, right? That would be a one to the one plus one, which is one fifth squared. A three would be a two to the two plus one, which is a two is right there. It's one fifth squared cubed is one fifth to the sixth. And then a four is gonna be that term now raised to the fourth. So I get one fifth to the 24th power. And if you now write out the series, what we're basically talking about is a series that goes one fifth plus one fifth squared plus one fifth to the sixth, one fifth to the 24th. Now those numbers, probably good to know in 21C in, in, in a series. Uh, one, two, six, 24, those are factorials. One fifth to the one factorial, two factorial, six is three factorial, 24 is four factorial. So this series is really the series of one fifth to the n factorial. And now that we recognize that, okay, you can tell these, these fractions are gonna get small very, very fast, right? One fifth to the 24th is really, really small. So I can just do a straight up comparison test with the geometric series one fifth to the n, uh, which is a convergent ge geometric series. So that would be enough to prove that this series converges. We're actually using the comparison test on that one. Okay.